YouTube. Today we're going to be continuing our ESO Explain series where I kind of go over another topic on ESO and help explain it to you guys like with the pre-existing knowledge that I have and that today is going to be how to appraise items on ESO. A very tricky topic but we are going to process it through together and we're going to have that discussion in the comments below and hopefully you guys learn something. But before we get into it I just have to let you guys know that we are still doing the giveaway for the month of April. All you have to do is enter, is leave comments on any of the videos that I have, uh, basically stating anything. The only thing is I just ask that you don't spam, like don't just comment oh, on every video. That wouldn't be helpful. I mean, it probably would be for the algorithm, but I don't want it to be a contest of who can spam the most comments. You know, I want to try to keep it productive, but you guys have been doing so great with that so far, so... That brings us to the question of the day. Which zone storyline of base or DLC is your favorite for me? That is going to be Somerset. I think that the quest line in here was absolutely immaculate. It tied in the Sigic Order. It tied in three Daedric Princes. I don't want to spoil it, but it was absolutely amazing, and I highly suggest that you do it. But le let me know what your favorite zone quest line is. It can be DLC, non-DLC, and then put that in the comments below. So... Now let us talk about how to appraise an item. And this is a very tricky topic, but we are going to talk about all the facets of it and how you can start doing it. So to start off, what we are going to do is we are going to pick an item. And I have actually picked an item that I have purchased earlier today for very cheaply. And that is the Night Hollow Boots. Now we are doing this during the Jubilee event, and that is going to kind of make the prices all wonky, but that is a good learning experience for us because we need to consider things like this. We need to consider when ESO events are going on and how those ESO events will affect the market so that I know I can go in and snipe these, these motive books and then use them for myself. Or if they're doing double drops like they do like in the DLC zones like Vardenfell, that's going to plummet all of the stuff that drops from there. So it's important to consider those things, and that's why we're talking about an item that is dropping randomly from an event. So you saw 30k there. We're going to continue to go around. Now, what am I looking for? Just the price? I am not looking for just the price. Another important thing to consider, too, that I'm doing is seeing how many are listed. Now, you might be thinking, well, there's probably more listed outside of Mournhold, and you're probably correct. However... You see also the other thing too we're looking for at here is time. How long has it been listed for a certain price? Now, five days ago still takes us during the event, so likely what could be happening too. This could be worth 35k. However, the people like me who just sniped it for cheaply might be thinking to themselves, well, I could probably get a better deal during the event. This might be a fair price in two to three weeks, but not right now. But we're still thinking to ourselves in the back of our head, okay. We've seen two. So there's two up in Mournhold right now. You know, the pinnacle of guild trading. And I think I've gone too fast. Oh, no, we haven't. So there's none in that one. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to... <laughs> don't judge me. Okay, this takes us to a perfectly good example right here. So this is 30 days. That is the normal time. This means that this was just listed. Um, it not listed within the last hour because that would say one month just as a fun fact for you so this means the 16.300 gold which is very way weird way to say it don't judge me this is going to ask us an important question is this a fair deal probably if i wanted to list this item right now should i list it less equal or more think that to yourself right now and we're going to go check the last skill trader over here and I'm going to answer what I would do in just one minute. So this is back to the beginning. We're back to the 30K that we started with. If I was going to list this up right now, I would list this up for 30K. Why? So there's something important to consider, too, that I think a lot of people fall into this pitfall of. You don't need to be the cheapest listing. And we'll talk about other situations that will cause cheaper listings like stack size, traits, quality, etc. We'll get to that in a little bit. But you don't don't feel the need to undercut everything cuz you're not trying to sell in the next 30 seconds. Like you're not trying to, you know, these people who are running around, you know, buying things. Your goal is not to sell to them in the next 5 minutes. Your goal is to make a decent chunk of profit within your 30-day window. Now, something to consider, too, is, is how immediately do you need that gold? And this is something I ask people when they're listing items. Because for me, 
I will list it and then if it gets brought back to me within 30 days, I will then relist it for like 25% off. And then if it's, an, it's still again, I'll start taking off 10 to 25% depending on what the item is. I don't need gold immediately um, because I, anything I could buy, I have enough liquid assets to purchase immediately. And I think that's the mindset that you want to go in because if you're farming, 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 and you're undercutting yourself, undercutting yourself, undercutting yourself, you're taking more time to get less money, but you're getting the gold faster. But again, unless you want to sit and look at your gold, as long as you have what you need, you know, as long as you can buy what you need in the, the meantime, I would say that that's not the optimal way to do it. Let's talk about something else. Let us say we are going to look at Bewitched Sugar Skulls. This is actually one of the items that I use to make my first million on ESO, basically cornering the market on these. This is a very interesting item, and I highly encourage people to consider selling consumables because for me consumables are the way to go you could be playing on a wholly different console than me see vastly different prices or you could be playing on a different console and see almost none when i was playing eso like three years ago when i actually first started to like want to not be broke i noticed that there was a severe lack of consumables being sold specifically pvp consumables so i started selling tristat but which sugar skulls that's how I made my initial money on ESO. That was able to let me afford to be in four guild traders at once. And then I went out and farmed overland gear, kept those four guild traders full. That was 120 items. I was farming Mother Sorrow. I was farming spinners. I was trying to you know, convert my AP into Deadly Strike. At the time, I was also doing Elfbane and Elysian and keeping those traders full just to keep that passive income coming back to me. But this is also very interesting because I would argue that the person who's listed this up for 30 days doesn't fully appreciate um, that generally less stack sizes sell faster. So like for example, more people are going to be likely to purchase these individual ones and more people will be likely to buy a stack of 5 over a stack of 30. The expectation is, is if you're buying in bulk that you're getting some sort of deal. See here you can see this is this is more accurate. You get tens, 700, 5, 800, 800, 800, 800, 2, 1200. This is important to consider. So if you're like me and you're in a situation where you want your guild slots to be full, but you don't want them to be wasted, you might want to consider selling in a decent bit of bulk. If I had to sell consumables right now for food, I would consider a stack size of 5 to 10 for sugar skulls based on what I've seen so far. Yep, so you're seeing it here. I would probably go into a realm of five. Cause that way I could get probably, I could ask for probably at least 800 um, as opposed to the 700. Or I might even consider a stack size of three. Although likely if I'm seeing all of this being sold at once, as you can see there's so many listings. I'm probably going to consider not selling sugar skulls at this current time. Um, just because it doesn't seem like, I mean, look at all these stacks of 10. They're actually probably sold. Yeah, they're all actually, oh, no, they're not sold on by the same person. Some of them were sold by the same person. I'm going to be saying, wow, there is a heavy market for this. And that's important to consider. Another thing that we're going to look at right now together is we are going to pick a Mournhold trader. And we are going to go into the history. And we are going to see what is selling, when, how, why. So you see that this Akaviri chest just sold for 23k and 805 was paid in taxes. Dirty taxes. So why is this important? And this tells us two things. It tells us how frequently things are being sold, when things were last sold, and about how much then you see obviously to how much it was going for. Now, there is a you also have to consider too a couple things when you look at this. This is sold. This doesn't tell you if the deal was necessarily good or bad. What this tells you is if someone was willing to pay 20k for a Moongrave Fane shield. That's what this tells you. So don't overthink it too, too much because you could still get more money from it. You could get vastly less money from it because the person who bought this might not have any clue to what they're doing in, in regards to prices. They might have thought, this is a deal. I need to go in there and snipe this right away. And in reality, every other trader around them had this offer half off. So... Consider that, but also consider, too, that this is a sold listing, which means that you're not guessing what something is going to sell for. You're physically looking at what is selling. These health essences sold for 29 k 
which is absolutely insane because I believe that's over market value. Um, this also doesn't necessarily tell you how those potions were made. So there's a couple of things to consider too. Another thing I want you guys to also keep in mind is what specifically body pieces usually sell for more. And generally, your bigger pieces, like your legs, your chest, will sell for more. But there are exceptions. Like if you, the Minotaur helmet is a helmet of a Minotaur. It's not some rinky-dinky little hood that you throw over yourself. So it looks cool. Therefore, it's, it's able to get 120k. Whereas like an Assassin's League shield also is good, but that's because the shield itself looks good. The Minotaur staves 40k, which even I would argue that's probably very high in this market right now. Let me see if we can find some more motifs. Uh, worm cultist, people are buying worm cultist pretty highly. Other thing too, I want you guys to consider, this is not a physical rule of thumb, but this is something I want you guys to consider, is, is that the longer that the motif has been out, so the lower the number, you can see the number here is 94 versus 57. Generally, the higher the number, the more value it's worth. Now there are exceptions because some of these will only drop from dungeons. And those of you guys have watched my video on how to find all the motives, you know that where you can go to look to see where something specifically drops through the trick is you can just go over to the crafting station. Uh, you'll know that there are some that drop from pretty ridiculous places. Um, so those are obviously going to be worth a little bit more. And then there's going to be ones too where people are more likely to complete the book because it's tied to an achievement. We're not going to focus necessarily on all that too. And this is also during the Jubilee event. So people are just listing motifs up. Just absolutely just throwing them to the wall. Akaviri boots, you could probably get more than 10k for it. But does that mean this was a bad deal? Probably not because the person who's buying these is thinking to themselves, so many people are listing these up right now all over you know the game 10k to me is a fair price i could probably get it for less but 10k is also affordable and this is important because a lot of you guys will be playing during events of eso so it comes down to how do i know what to do during a specific event and the general answer is is the jubilee event is throwing purple motives into the market that is going to plummet their value supply demand now the demand for these motives has gone up because people are going mm, this is the deal i could get my achievement books filled out i can get some of my you know i can get some of those unlockables you know i'm, I'm going to go invest in these but what more than likely also happens too is you see those those gold motives that are only released during the event and by the end of the event they're completely garbage like those spider legs that you probably have ten thousand of garbage they're worth nothing we're also going to start seeing things too, like set armor pieces. We've seen Mother Sorrow. Here's a good example too, a bear haunch. So the other thing you could do too is you could go look, 20 bear haunches sold within the last hour. Maybe this is something that I need to go in and start looking at selling myself. That's just things I want you guys to consider. And this is another thing too that I like. This person sold New Moon Alkalite. This is a free craftable set for this individual to make this is damn near free which means that he was able, same with Boots of Hunting's Rage. Now, I don't know if this was enchanted or non-enchanted, and he upgraded it to purple, which would cost a couple hundred more gold. But this is I like this a lot because this is something that I want you guys to always look for if you have crafters. You can always lift it, list things like Hunting's Rage, New Moon Acolyte, Law of, or Hat of Julianos. You can list those items up, and you can sell them for damn near free. Same with enchantments. If you have like purple kudas or purple rakudas and kudas combine them together and you can just start throwing them up there use your guild slots all the time don't leave any available and you can see more we got more modus but that's going to kind of bring us into the final section of the video and that is what traits will sell and this is a bit of a complicated uh, subject matter so the Rule of thumb is you have to ask yourself, is it a PvP set or a PvE set? And the rule of thumb for such things is, let's take a look at Bankerai, for example. This is a PvP set. It gives you offensive penetration. Not as popular as it was, but let's just talk about it for a second. Let's say you were going to Bankerai. You were farming the Spriggan set to sell. We just saw a sword sell, I think, for 20k. 
and we're thinking to ourselves, hmm, this could be a market that I'm going to jump on into. We look at the set and we go, this is clearly a PvP set. How do we know that? Well, it gives you general max, like max stamina, weapon damage, and penetration. Those are generally things that you see more geared towards PvP as opposed to PvE, whereas things like critical hits, critical damage, um, and then minor slayer and trial gear, that's all going to be heading towards that PvE aspect. And we'll talk about tank sets here in just one minute. But let's talk about you are going to wear this for your PvP endgame. What, what traits would you consider? So you might slap on Reinforced for your chest piece and your legs. So I'd say Reinforced is not too, too bad. Impen is still probably going to be the more sought after set. But then you could think to yourself too... You know, you know, maybe there's some builds out here that are going to want a glass cannon this. Maybe some divines. People might want a little bit of divines. Well, fitted might be good. So really, it's not about what traits are bad. It's about what traits are really going to be used and then which ones won't be used. I would say people aren't going to be putting training gear on this. They're probably not going to be in using, like, invigorating. They're going to want maybe reinforced. They're going to want uh, probably not sturdy. Uh, they'll probably want impen divine. Those will probably be the top two chess pieces. I would say reinforced. Those are things I want, and training is obviously not going to be here. The rings obviously are going to be easy because they're going to come out with stamina on them. Weapons can be also tricky. Two, I would say generally sharpened is pretty popular, but again, it could be one of those situations where they're going to, you know, turn it to a nern anyway. So. That could be a little more tricky for the uh, the weapon pieces, but that's going to be how you're going to appraise those PvP items. PvE items are even easier. Mother Sorrow, Divines, that's it. Boom, done. <laughs> so that conversation is super easy. Uh, we can actually even go look at Mother Sorrow, and you can see right away that this is going to be pretty clearly a PvE set just because of the critical, critical, critical. Uh, and it, it's very straightforward. And then all the jewelry pieces are going to drop with Maximum Magicka. Likely people are going to transmute that anyway, so it doesn't matter a whole, whole lot. Um, and you can't sell it transmuted anyway, and you're not going to get any other traits. So that's easy. So why is this important? Traits are very important to determining things. Another thing, too, that my friends used to do when they were going through their inventory is, is if they had a lot of gold mats. So say I was to get... A really good, let's say I got the Spinner's Fire Staff. I actually have one of these. And I was like, I also have eight rosin I want to sell. I, and I had it in the, the best trait possible. I had it in Sharpened. I actually have one of these staffs. I don't know if I have it equipped or if I'm using a different build right now. Let's take a look. Yep, so I've got this bad boy equipped right now. And if I was looking to sell this exact same and I got it in green... I would consider, too, upgrading it all the way to gold. Because not only could you probably ask for more, I well, mean, you definitely could ask for more money, but I would also ask for slightly more than those rosins are worth, or maybe even comparable, depending. Just because not only are you saving your listing space, you're also giving a, getting rid of something at once. Like, you're, you're making a more refined item for somebody. So you're taking effort, like, you're... You're taking something off their to-do list. Like if they needed to gold it out, you've gone, Don, now I don't need to gold this out. You know, so now I don't have to run around, buy a bunch of rosin. Or maybe if they don't have maximum woodworking, now they don't have to go run, get their friend to upgrade it for them, trade it back to them. You're taking things off their to-do list, which means you can get more money for things. Also, same thing too is if it had the wrong weapon enchantment. You could add a new weapon enchantment on there too. Things to consider, uh, again... I actually prefer doing that because then it takes things off of your inventory, saves more spaces. Again, too, like you're gonna want to sell your gold items. You know, when you notice the market's kind of leaning towards that way, you could, if you notice you have a lot of provisioning recipes, start offloading those provisioning things. But what I really wanted to focus on here is materials, and then something else we'll get to in just one second. As a lot of people think that these are worthless, and a lot of this stuff goes into furnishings and furnishings always sell so do not assume that this stuff is worthless um, these brigade uh, ivory brigade claps were selling for 8 to 10k for a hot minute on xbox 
which means that this would be 90K. I don't know what they're worth right now, but that would have been 90K right there. And all I did was deconstruct random pieces of armor I was getting and, and picking up things in the overworld. And that was 90K right there. The other thing too I wanted to point your attention towards is your furnishing materials. Again, a lot of this stuff is also used in furnishings, specifically your heartwood and your mundane runes. That's going to be worth a pretty penny. And I want you guys to know that because I want you guys to be able to make the most out of the stuff in your craft bag. Also, if you have lots of kudas, feel free to convert them into different things and list them up. If you have a lot of red kudas, nothing wrong too with listing those up also. But the one final point that I want you guys to consider for all of this is where you're selling your things. If you're in a free trader, if you're in a paid trader, if you're in a premium paid trader, that will affect how much money you're going to be able to get. If I'm going to a refuge in the middle of nowhere, I'm not going to be paying market value for something. I will take it at a deal and that's it. So that's something to consider too. Just because you're price checking things here does not mean that if you sell it somewhere else, you can get a comparable rate. Now, if you're in Wayrest or Elden Root, you know, you could get that comparable rate. But if you're even starting to get into Daggerfall, if you're starting to get into Somerset, you know, where the people get a decent bit of foot traffic, but not as much, your prices are going to start going down because people are going to want those value. It's like going to a, a, you know, a car boot sale, if you have those in England, or a flea market in America, you're going to want a deal. You're not going there to pay market value. You're already buying it from someone that's a little sketchy. If you're going to a flea market or a car boot sale, obviously, you know, you're not... You know, you don't have, it's not about who you buy it from necessarily. If I go to Rothgar, it's not a sketchy transaction, but you know what I mean. The other final point, too, that I have probably said about three times now is, is that there are price checking apps. I always put them in the description of the videos. These are massively helpful. Um, they do have some shortcomings. A lot of them will not tell you the quality of the item is sold, so they won't tell you if it was upgraded to gold, if it was green. They won't tell you the trait on it. Um, that can be a bit of a, you know, something to keep in the back of your head. But again, it's always good to have more information as opposed to less. And again, my final, final, final point is don't feel like you need to undercut people. These things will sell. Your goal is not to sell within the first 30 seconds of you listing something. Um, that is just a poor way to get your money because if you're going through all the effort to farm all this stuff, don't feel like you don't deserve at least a fair amount of work for what you've been doing. I know people who farm Mother Sorrow religiously filled 120 slots of it, and their stuff was flying off because they were selling it at a discounted rate. They were undercutting themselves. It's like you're only working against yourself at that point, and don't do that. But that's going to wrap up today's video. Again, let me know what your favorite Zone Story quest line was. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or oh, you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.